First Chronicles four and about verse First Chronicles four and about verse nine. Well actually look at about first Chronicles four and about verse one. It said, the sons of Judah, Pharaoh, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Shobal. What's the significance of Judah? What tribe y'all still come from? And that's the, and Judah is the ruler, right? Mm -hmm. The scepter should not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, right? We're not talking about the same Judah between Jesus, right? No, nah, Judah, I mean, that, Judah was his name, but no, we're talking about the son of Jacob, whose name means praise. He say, and Relah, the son of Shobal, begat Jahath, and Jahath begat Ahumai, and Lahad, and these are the families of the Zorites, and these were the father of Edom, Jezreel, and Ishmael, and Idbash. The name of their sister was Helzaponai, and Peniel, the father of Gedor, and Ezra, the father of Husha. These are the sons of Hor, the firstborn of Arapta, the father of Bethlehem. Now you see what a name with Bethlehem Judea come from. That's who the city was named after. And Ashar, the father of Tukoya, had two wives. He lied in Nara, and Nara bare him Azazam, and Hephar, and Timonai, and Hasharai. And these were the sons of Nahara, the sons of Heli, were Zerath, Jehozor, and Ethan. And Coz begat Anub, and Zobadai, and the families of Iral, the son of Harun. But listen to what we can. Look at verse 9. He said, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on God, on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, that thy hand might be with me, that thou would keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now he just sat here and said that Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. He's more honorable than his brethren. Now why would he just here and say this man is more honorable than his brethren? No, no. Look at Psalm 45 and 7. Boy, that dog. And the smell is burnt and the smell like outside and it is wretched. Psalm 45 and 7. This is what he tells him. He said, Thou love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, had anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellow. So now we see he's more uh, honorable than the angels. But then he was also more honorable than man. Why would he be more honorable than man? He said he made this man to exalt him. See, let's see why. Look at Philippians 2. Philippians 2 and about verse 7. Make it verse 5. He said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in the Messiah, Yahshua, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbed to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him, and gave him a name which is above every name, that in the name of Yahshua, every knee should bow, of the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahshua the Messiah is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So this is why Yahshua is more honorable than his brethren, is it not? Because he humbled himself and, and made himself of no reputation and died. So God highly exalted him because he humbled himself to the word. But look at something else. Let's look at 1 Peter 5. See, now you got to sit there and you got to take on the similitude of Jabez, the same similitude that the Lord manifested in his soul. 1 Peter 5 and about verse 6. He said, humble, yourself, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time. Because that's what Jabez was showing one. For him, to, for him to make supplication to God, he was sitting there humbling himself under the mighty hand of God, didn't he? So not only if he was more honorable than his brethren, what would make Jabez more honorable than his brethren? What would the thing would he have to do? Look at, look at Exodus 26. Let's show you what the thing he would be doing to make him more honorable than his brethren. Let's get that. Exodus 26. Because if you want to be more honorable than your brethren according to the flesh, your son, you're going to have to do it. Let's see what it is. 
He says, showing mercies unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Would that make you honorable before the outside of God? Let me see something in Proverbs real fast. Let me see something in Proverbs real fast. It's something in Proverbs that's come to my mind. You talking about showing mercy when they do you wrong? Right? No, he said he showed mercy to those who keep his commandment, meaning God going to show mercy to those who follow him. Oh, yeah. Why, you know what I'm talking about? He say, as a father serve his own son who serve him. I show mercy to my children. You see, he don't show mercy to bastards. Yeah. Look at the Proverbs 29 and 23. Proverbs 29 and 23. He said, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. That honor, then he just tell you, he said, Why do you seek the honor that comes that don't come from God only? He said, You seek honor one from another. Yeah. See, Jabez didn't seek the honor that came from man. Remember, he said, I don't receive honor from men. Yahshua said, I seek the honor that comes from God only. Jabez was seeking the honor that comes from God only. Wouldn't that make him more honorable than his brother? Because he humbled his spirit. Because he received the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. He received it with meekness. That's why the Lord told you, blessed are bless the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. See, ain't no way in the world, you, if you can't humble yourself to the obedience of God's word, how are you going to be able to be more honorable than your brother? How are you going to be able to do that? See, look at Proverbs. We read this other day when he said the king's favor is towards a wise servant. Obviously, the favor of God going to be to somebody who can humble themselves. That'll make you honorable. Kings, kings magnify and honor they serve. When Daniel was uh, was in, in Babylon, wasn't he magnified and lifted up because he was humble and he and the king honored him? Because he feared and he served God. Let me look back at this first chronicle before we we'll see what else you say about it. I think it's ready to come on out of that third but Look at this first chronicle for one more time. If I can get that. And what else did he say about him? And he asked for him to bless him and enlarge his coast that his hand would be with him. And he would keep him from evil and not grieving. So let's sit here and look at this here. Let's see if he would bless him and enlarge his coast. Let's see something about the enlarging of the coast first. Because what coast do you think he's talking about enlarging? Coast? Let's see. Let's look at Genesis 15. Or 13, actually. Genesis 13. Let's see what he say right here in Genesis 13 and about verse 14. It said, and Yah said unto Abram, After that lot was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which thou see to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land. And the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. So now you're sitting here telling him, if you walk in this land, all the parts that you touch, I'm going to give it to you. Drop over here to verse 15. Look at uh, chapter 15 and verse 18. Look what he tells you. Chapter 15, verse 18 in Genesis. Look what else he said. He said, the same day y'all made a covenant with Abraham, and saying, unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites and the Kenites and the Catamanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the... The Rephams and the Amorites and the Canites and the Girgashites and the Jebusites. He said, all this area, I'm going to get you. So he asking him to a larger coast, did Give me this land. Let's see something else about the Lord. Hold on, what it is. Let's go to uh, Matthew 9, I believe. Matthew 9. No, it's not Matthew 9. I think it's Matthew 1 here. Could it be Matthew 3? Where is that located at, man? It's escaping my brain. It might be Luke. Oh, here it is. Matthew 4. Matthew 4 and about verse 12. Matthew 4 and 12. It says, Now when Yahshua had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast and the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the name of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region in the shadow of death, light has sprung up. So he said he traversing his land and enlarging his coast because all these people who were walking in death and in sin, he said the light of the world done came. Everlasting life has been manifested because he's enlarging his coast. Let's look at Luke 13. Let's see if he did what, what Abraham did to enlarge his coast to, to take his inheritance. Luke 13 and about verse 32. Matter of fact, 
make it 31. He said, The same day there, sir, there came certain Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto him, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today, and tomorrow and the third day I shall be perfected. He said, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. So he said, tell me, if you notice, the Lord walked through all the land, didn't he? Huh? Y'all realize that? Nicole Britton, y'all realize that? That he walked through all the traverse of the land? He had the markets and areas then. Because he told Abraham to do the same thing. And you see, in Jabez is asking for his coast to be enlarged. You know what I'm talking about? How else is his coast going to be enlarged? Look at Daniel 7. Did, because if I'm not, not mistaken, didn't when Solomon become king, wasn't his coast enlarged as well? Wasn't he able to gain more land as well? Daniel 17, 7, 7 and 14. He said there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages and tongues and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom is that which is not destroyed. So that means he got rulership over all type of places. I think it's Psalm 72. It could be I, Michael 5. Let me see if it's Psalm 72 or not. Because Daniel was alright. That wasn't what I had in my mind. Let me see if it's Psalm 72 or not. Yes, it is. Psalm 72 and 8. Psalm 72 and 8. Look what he tells us. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. And from the river unto the ends of the earth. Sounds like to me his coast being enlarged, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sounds like his coast going to be enlarged. That means he just ain't going to have dominion over the land of Israel. He going to have dominion over the whole earth. He going to have dominion over the whole earth. Because this is what Jabez is praying to the God of Israel for. Look back at First Chronicles. Let's see if that's what he was praying for. That's what he prayed for. And he said God granted him that request. He said, he prayed that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that your hand might be with me. What did the father, what did he say about the father? Let's see what he said about the father. John 8, let's see if the hand of the father was always with Yahshua. Let's see if he hearkened to that. Let's see if this is a similar to the Lord or this just mentioned. Because you see, it doesn't mention nothing about any of these sons in this, in this, in this uh, genealogy. No son is mentioned by name specifically in this genealogy. You think they just stopped and mentioned Jabez for no reason. You sit back and you look at this entire genealogy starting from chapter 1. There is nothing said about any son in here specifically in this nature but Jabez when we get to the tribe of Judah. Because he went down to breaking down all these sons from all these tribes. And then when he get to the tribe of Judah, he began to go break this thing down. And he mentioned Jabez specifically that this man was more honorable than all his brethren. And then he went here to tell you that he also called on the God of Israel and asked the man to bless him. And then he asked the man to enlarge his coast. And that his hand might be with him, and that he would keep him from evil, that it wouldn't read. And it said, God granted him his request. Let's see if the, if the hand of Yah was always with him. Let's look at John 8. Let's look at John 8. And I think there's another spot that's coming in my mind where he say, My father ain't never left me alone. No, that's what that was John 8. This is what he said in verse 28. Then said Yahshua unto them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And He that sent me is with me. My Father hath not left me alone, for I do always the things that please Him. You don't sound like you're going to leave somebody alone who, who's honorable than everybody else. You say His hand is with Him. Did He not keep Yahshua from evil? Look at what He prayed for His disciples in John 17. Amen. What verse that is specifically what it says in John 17. Let's see. Now John 17 about verse 14. Yeah, we read it earlier. Say, I have given my word, and the world have hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said, I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. He said, this is what he prayed. He said, I don't ask you to take him out of the world, but to keep him from evil. He said, I should have asked to come out of the world. He said, keep me from evil. See, look here. Look at Matthew 6. Look at the prayer he taught us to pray. Look what he told you now. Now, you thinking when he come with this prayer, you think the father ain't going to hearken to his own son, who he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. 
And he said, listen to him, would that make him more honorable than his brother? When any time, and when any time a man came down, he done said that about a man. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. If this is the only begotten uh, son of the father, quite obviously, he more honorable than his brother. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6. By verse 7. He said, but when you pray, use not vain repetition as the heathen do. Do they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking? Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father know what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, and we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How many times Joshua was delivered from evil when the people went to kill him until the scriptures had to be fulfilled? How many times did he hide himself away when these people came to kill him? See, let's look at 1 Corinthians 10. First Corinthians 10 and about verse 13. He said, There have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with, with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear. Sounds like to me, his hand was with him that that would keep him from evil, would it not? That that evil wouldn't grieve him? Because see what happens when that evil grieves him. Let's look at some. Let's look at Ezekiel 9 first. Ezekiel 9, verse 4. He said, And Yah said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Sounds like to me he was going to deliver these men from evil so that they wouldn't be grieved by it. Because it sounds like to me they were grieving for the things that they were seeing. See, look what the Lord told you in Matthew 11. Matthew 11 and about verse 16. And he says, But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It's like unto children sitting in the markets, calling unto their fellows, saying, We've piped unto you, and you have not danced. We've mourned unto you, and you have not lamented. He said, We're sitting here telling you all this evil that's going on. None of you have lamented. None of you mourning. You're not vexed by it. It don't bother you, because you're evil. Because you're not honorable. So why would he bless you? Look at 2 Peter 2 again. 2 Peter 2 chapter. And something we ain't read, though. And we were saved. Yeah, you see, we had to separate. This wouldn't fit with what we were dealing with. Second Peter two and seven. He said, "He delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy behavior of the wicked, for that the righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing and vexed his righteous soul from day to day with the unlawful deed." This is why this man said, "Deliver me from evil that I don't be grieved by." Lot, what did he do with Lot? Did he not show that same similitude with Lot? Delivered Lot from out of these people because he was vexed with their evil deeds. You think the Lord ain't going to do that with his servants who vexed with the wickedness that's going on here? That's why I say if you want to build a community in this wicked place upon which God say his eyes are not on. Because the law say his eyes is upon Israel and upon Jerusalem. He said that's a land he cared for and his eyes are always upon it. Don't make no sense for God to set up no kingdom here. Does it make sense for y'all for him to set up a kingdom here? He said I ain't going to deliver y'all from this here. He said I ain't going to do it. He said, he ain't going to do it. It don't make no sense for him to do it. It just don't make no sense. So he said, like he said, look what he said in verse 9, though. The Lord know how to deliver the godly out of temptation. Sound like the Lord know how to keep you from evil, then, don't he? And he said, to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous they are, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. So this is a whole key thing. But look back now. He said, and God granted him that which he requested. Did not Yahshua ask the same thing? That we could be able to be granted into his land, that he would bless us for obeying him, that we could be counted worthy to enter the land, that the hand of God might be with us, that he keep us from evil, that he might not grieve us. Now, now y'all looking at it, and he said, and God granted him that which he requested. And the Lord came right back in John 17 and prayed for these same things. So we have to sit there and look at it. As we, like I said, we go through and we look in this genealogy. Nowhere is it one man mentioned in this fashion. 
Now you see this here. Is this speaking about Jabez or is it speaking about the Lord? And then it says she bearing with sorrow. Now we can sit yeah, back. That's speaking about the Lord. Yeah, I just see, but let's look how she bearing with sorrow. Let's go to Revelation 12. Let's see if she bearing with sorrow. I just called. I just saw her now. Because he said that's what the, what Jabez's name means. Revelation 12 and about verse 1. It said, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, pain to be delivered. So it sounded like she had bearing him with sorrow in them. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, did cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her man child, her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up under God and to his throne. Straight up and down. Now we know this is the Lord referring to here. She says she bare this son, called him Jabez, I bear him with sorrow. We see the same thing. As referring to the Lord. Jerusalem bearing her son with sorrow. You know what I'm talking about? And that he would be, and he asked God to bless him. Oh, Birdman. And she asked God to bless him. I mean, he asked God to bless him. And to enlarge his coast, we've seen Yahshua coast enlarge, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Hold on, let's make sure we run it down clearly. Because guess what? If you let a nigga tell it, I'm speaking with conjunction now. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you mess around, you'll be on tape. He's saying Jabaz was more honorable than his brethren. Have we not established Yahshua more honorable than his brethren? Because he said he exalted him above everybody. The scripture saying, and I mean in Acts 4 and 12, he said he's given the name Yahshua amongst that's the only name of which men can be saved, which means he above all his brethren. Because the book don't say he we sanctify him, that he ain't ashamed to call us brethren. He said he that sanctified and he that, that sanctified are all the one. And he's not ashamed to call them brethren, which means and he said he made the captain of our salvation perfect through suffering, which means he more honorable than his brethren. You know what I'm talking about? He's more honorable than his brethren. You know what I'm talking so about? So we would be more by us doing what we have to do. We would, we would be able to receive the same honor because yeah. why was Yahshua more honorable than his brother? He humbled himself unto the will of his father. Look what else he tells him now. Then he say he prayed that he enlarged his coast. We've established that, right? Mm -hmm. We've established that the hand was with him. Because it said God was with him wherever he went. He said he increased with God in stature and wisdom with God and man. Going right back because he's just right here. Power to rule as God, and you have prevailed with God and man. That's the only way God's going hand gonna be able to be with you because He's a ruler. He prevailed. He overcame. God with. We just read what a man said. My father ain't never left me alone. Mm -hmm. So if his father ain't never left him alone, don't that mean his hand with him? Yes. Didn't he say he asked him then to do this here? Would you keep me from evil? Did he keep Yahshua from evil? Oh yeah. Did he say that it don't grieve him? That it don't grieve him. And then the Lord turned around and prayed the same thing for his disciples and then for those who believed on him through his disciples. And it said God granted it in his request. That made sense for all y'all. Oh, oh, praise, praise the Lord. That made sense for you, Nicole, Brittany. Yeah. 